it's amazing, uh, obviously, watching your son become a superstar now and you competing with him and becoming champion because we saw him, right? As, as viewers, we saw him as, as a little kid. Yeah, it's amazing. When did you realize that he wanted to do this as well? He finished high school, went to community college, never was a school kid. And uh, there was a point in, in his life that I sat him down and it had to have been, a, uh, he was 19 years old. And I told him, I said, bro, what do you, what do you think of doing with your life? You don't have any plans. What, what is it that you want to do? And then he broke it down and he's like, Dad, I want to see if I can make it in wrestling. I said, okay. And then his whole life changed after that because uh, we put a plan together, sent him out to Tampa. Um, he was always a, a mama's boy, you know, always hanging around the house and with the friends and, and uh, trying not to get in trouble. Uh, but when he was committed to, to trying to make it in this business, he put everything into it. Like I said, he moved to Tampa. I got him a part-time job over there with the prep meal company that, that uh, I work with, Nutrition Solutions. I spoke to, to the CEO, Chris Cavallini. I said, oh, can you do me a solid? I want to send my son out there, but I need him to get a job. I need him to be independent, you know, and uh, he's going to train you know, uh, most of his time, you know, but I'm sure we can figure out a schedule where he can work and then off of work, go train. And it worked out, you know, it worked out for him very well. He was down there for six months and uh, trained with Jay Lethal. Mm. Yeah, and I think that probably was the best choice we both could have made. So he emerges in the midst of the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a great footage last summer, almost exactly <clears throat> a year ago, uh, the first show with fans back, you guys are in the main event. Um, and uh, yeah. Edge is with you as well, who has meant a lot to your career. Yes. You guys were tag champions. Could you even describe what that night was like? Because it's one thing to do it in the Thunderdome, and the Thunderdome was great for what it was, but it's not the same, right? Yeah. It's not the same. Uh, it seemed like you were a little bit nervous. It seemed like he was a little bit nervous. For you to go <laughs> out there with your son and not just go out there to walk him out, you guys are competing together yeah. as a unit in the main event, on SmackDown, in front of fans, the big return. What was that like for you? Man, it was special. Not to mention our opponents that night, you know, yeah. Roman and the Usos. Um, just right there within itself, you know, uh, those six superstars just carried a lot of weight and a lot of pressure. And uh, we were opening up the show, too. We thought we were going to be the last match of the right, night. Right. No, we kicked off the show. Uh, I've always thought that when the show kicks off right, the rest of the night goes up higher and higher, you know. Um, a lot of pressure for me as a, as a father. Uh, I felt um, the pressure that my son was probably feeling, even though he said, I was excited, I was ready to go. Uh, but I still have that instinct, which I've, I've released it slowly, uh, more and more within time. The fact that Dominic, uh, he's a rookie and he can make mistakes, but I feel his pressure and I carry that with me in the ring. But uh, overall, it was a very special moment. Edge gave him some words of encouragement that really boosted up his morale. And uh, I just tried to enjoy the moment as much as I could because it was very special. First time for Dominic to be able to wrestle in front of fans. We were in Houston. The crowd was on fire. Uh, you know, people were tired of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They were ready to have some fun. And we went out there and gave them one hell of a night. Do you find yourself more nervous these days because you're with him and you want him to succeed so much, as opposed to when you were, you know, in the midst of your great run just a few years ago without him by your side? I do, and I, and I, I catch myself telling me that constantly, like, you have to lay off. You know, uh, I feel like I put a lot of pressure on him. And I know that's a bad thing, yeah, but at the same time, I feel like it might be a good thing because it'll push him to succeed even more. But uh, uh, it's gotten better within time because at the beginning I was like, I was on him constantly, yeah. you know. But, uh, you know, as much as I am calling out like the bad stuff that he does, I also uh, celebrate the good stuff that he does. And I, I tell him right away, you know, that looked dope. You should keep that. You should keep doing that, you know. And not only me, you know, um, the 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 camaraderie in the locker room, the guys that talk to him, like the, the Roman Reigns, you know, that pull him to the side and tell him, or even Dom asking, you know, Edge, uh, 
anything, uh, any advice that you can give me after watching the match, you know, and they'll sit down and talk with them. Randy Orton's the same way. That is special. That is special within itself, you know, and, and uh, that's what makes our industry, you know, so tight and close. We help each other uh, succeed and grow. How come he doesn't wear a mask? Good question. <laughs> I was expecting him to wear a mask. Everything happens just so fast that uh, from just being next to me doing promos with Samoa Joe and, and others, Brock Lesnar, uh, next thing you know, it was like, we want him to wrestle. Like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> And I told Dom, this was uh, during the pandemic, I told Dom, so they want you to wrestle at SummerSlam against Seth. If I was you, I would say no, because I don't think you're ready, but it's up to you, it's your choice. It's in your hands. And he's like, oh yeah, I'll do it. I said, okay. Yeah. Uh, that was- Were you upset? No, not at all. Okay. No, no, no. I was more worried and nervous than upset. I, I was nothing close to being upset. Um, I thought it was very gutsy for him to, to take the, the move, you know, and, and go with it. Because you only get one shot. Your debut, all eyes on you, even though there was no fans, but you know, there's fans watching you on TV. So to be able to, to step up and deliver, you know, never having a match ever before, you know, uh, in a ring. He simulated matches in training, but it's very different, especially when you step in there with the Seth Rollins. But I got to give Seth a lot of credit for that. You know, um, he carried him very well. Right. Yeah. I bet you were very nervous that night. Oh, my God. Very nervous. Probably more nervous than any of your matches? It was probably very close to when I had my first match. But when I had my first match, I was anxious and excited because I, I kept on asking for opportunities. Uh, and everybody would say, no, he's too small. I don't want him to get hurt. He's underage. You know, so um, one day said, okay, we got you booked. I was like, yeah, I'm in. So it was a bit of excitement with nerves. Mm -hmm. This one was like, oh man, I hope he does good. And I kept on thinking, he's got one shot. He either impresses or they're gonna talk about his debut being a complete failure. But. Uh, Man, when he finished that match, and I was right there in his corner, when he finished that match, I was like, wow, that was special. Something that uh, I've witnessed myself and with other talent as well. When I had my first match in WCW against Dean Malenko, uh, I walk into this locker room with just giants, Hogan's, uh, Nash, Hall, um, Steiner's, Lex Luger, Diamond Dallas Page. And I can just hear the mumbling like, who's this kid? What's he doing in the locker room? And I'm very respectful, always been. Went out and wrestled, came back, walked through the curtain. Everyone was glued to the monitor. So when Dean and I walked back, everyone just went. I was like, wow. You get a standing ovation by the locker room, that's special. When Dominic walked back uh, through Gorilla after his match against Seth, same thing happened with him. So I connected those two pieces together like there's something here, definitely. Has his emergence extended your career? In other words, if he wasn't here, if he wasn't doing this, do you think maybe you'd be thinking about leaving sooner? <clears throat> um, I'm sure uh, there might be a possibility that I, I could be maybe wrestling even less than I am now. Mm -hmm. um, definitely has extended my career and has given me a uh, second win to, to feel excited about doing this. Not that I'm not excited as it is, but uh, it's just special, it's different now. It's very different to be able to step in there with my son. You know, uh, not, I don't think there's any wrestlers out there, past or present, that have gotten the opportunity to wrestle next to their fathers. Right. And we were trying to put that together, Chavo maybe, and mm -hmm. Chavo Senior, mm -hmm. back in the day. Uh, I know Vince and Shane, you know, have, have done it, yeah. But, uh, you know, when you put all these pieces together, Dom being in a storyline with Eddie when he was seven years old, him hanging out in the locker rooms, you know, when I would bring him by, you know, and the same, my daughter, you know, they've been there since they've been kids. They pretty much grew up 
backstage, you know, knowing the talent. So when the fans see his growth and all of a sudden, well, now he's wrestling, man. It just makes it more special and it's more of an attraction, I believe. 100%. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just curious, you know, wrestling is a crazy business, as you know, and I feel like there's always some whispers like, oh, at some point, you know, Dom's going to turn on Ray. It's like there, right? It's always, it's always there in this crazy. The, the, right. you, everyone wants to see the, the, the family turn on each other. Right. We saw the McMahons, the Hearts. All. How would you feel about that if they come to you and say, we want your son to turn on you? So we, we actually talked about that during his first couple of weeks of training. Man, I remember sitting down with him and tell him, imagine if, if we can eventually work together. Because at the time, we didn't even know how long it was going to take him to get ready to see if we can even be in the same ring, you know. Um, so I told him, could you imagine if, if, if you started working and then we teamed up and eventually, you know, whether I turned on you or you turned on me, he was like, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> you know, our, our brains were kind of just flowing. Um, but then over time, it's like, man, I don't, I don't think we can do that. Like it's, our, our connection has been so tight, you know, from day one, the age of seven, and Eddie Guerrero and myself, that uh, I don't think it would be, uh, storyline-wise, it might be attractive. I said, but I, I, I need to feel it, I think, at the, mo at the moment, during that time. Right now, I feel like we're just, we have a really tight bond. But it would be something special. Uh, eventually, do you want him to wear a mask? That was another option that I gave him, a, a decision that if he wanted to take it. I told him it would be cool if uh, one day he earned the mask just like I did from my uncle. Uh, I thought when, when I wrestled the first time, my uncle was gonna say, right Mysterio Jr., here you go. Um, no, I was the hummingbird. And I, he never sat down and told me, look, you're gonna have to work for this name. I just felt like, okay, I'm not gonna be Mysterio Jr. Um, you know, three years into my career, one day he just surprised me and, and uh, made uh, an announcement in the ring before a match and, and had a Rey Mysterio Jr. mask, put it on as he took off the Colibri one and from that moment on I became Rey Mysterio Jr. So I truly believe that if, if Dom eventually wants to wear it and represent, you know, that uh, he's been working really hard to earn it. You know, maybe by the time I retire, the earning has already been paid off and there's a presentation of, of a mask, passing the mask on to the son, which I think it's cool to be able to be like that new superhero. Mm -hmm. You can be seen without the mask, interviews, but every time you wrestle, you put the mask on, you become that person. Is there anyone left that you haven't wrestled that you would love to and, and maybe they aren't available anymore to wrestle with? Like is there, is, I feel like you've pretty much been in there with everyone, but is there one guy in particular that you missed a, a, a chance to work with? Um, I don't think I have. Right. I, I think I, I've, I've been through pretty much the whole roster. Um, of course, I've, I've had very short matches with some that I would love to, to have like a full uh, storyline. Finn Balor is one of them. Um, you know, uh, Sami Zayn, you know, Kevin Nolan's. Um, but overall, I think I've, I've, I've pretty much crossed paths with, with uh, the complete roster, which is special, man, because it's a completely new generation, you know? It's different. Yeah, one guy that I always wanted to step in the ring but never had the opportunity, actually, was two guys, Brett and, uh, and Macho. Wow. I, I wanted to wrestle them really bad. Yeah, Shawn Michaels was in that list, but then Shawn... Uh, he made it special when Eddie passed. We did the tribute and Sean came up to me and said, I think Eddie would love this. You know, are you in? So oh yeah, 100%. Any of those moments throughout the years, um, you know, the passing of Eddie, you've seen a lot of your, you know, colleagues, unfortunately, um, pass away. It's a very tough business. We recently saw Scott Hall pass away and you wrote something very nice about him. Did it ever get to the point where you needed to take a break because of this, where, where the pain was too much, where you needed a break from the business because it can be very trying emotionally on, on, on you guys? I think if, if that time ever came was when Eddie passed and that just happened out of nowhere. Um, I remember it was on a Sunday 
and that night after the event that we were having, we were all going to fly to Europe to go on a tour, 11 or 12 day tour. And a couple of us were taken off the tour to go to Eddie's uh, uh, burial. And that was like, it was very consuming. You know, those next three or four days uh, leading into it and then after um, were just very, uh, very, very consuming. But, but I think if once that was over, we went right back on tour and I think that really helped all of us mm -hmm. because the vibe was, was definitely on, you know, uh, Eddie's presence, uh, that kept the moment going like Eddie was still there you know and and I think if I would have just pulled away from wrestling and locked myself up it would have been much worse so that was actually a healing process for me to be able to be on the road and and uh, interact with the fans and and just everybody paying a tribute to him was special do you have any regrets none 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 single thing None. You don't look back? No. That's tremendous. No. Yeah, I think the only regret I would have is I wish I would have known more on how to take care of my body so I wouldn't have gone through so many surgeries on my knees. Um, that's probably the only thing. And now I try to do that. I try to take care of myself as much as I can between um, uh, therapy, uh, IVs, uh, stem cells. You know, that's been like my my um, fountain of youth, pretty much. Not maybe telling Kevin Nash not to throw you into the trailer or something? <laughs> that, that, was that was easy. That was, that was <laughs> easy, yeah. I remember I, I, I was the one that told him, what if you catch me? Oh, that, that was your yeah, idea? I think so, yeah. Really? Even so. though everyone hated it. Like, they thought it was disrespectful towards you, I felt really? like. Well, I felt like the fans were like, how dare they treat Ray like this? How they? So, so I, probably, I probably said, I'll climb up the barricade uh -huh. and I'll dive. And he goes, oh, maybe. And just, just you know, that just it made it so historical. Like yeah. I would have never thought that that move was crazy, right? Was gonna be talked about years and years after. The lawn, the uh, human uh, lawn dart. He said, yeah, said yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. I feel like WCW gets looked back on. Like you know, there were a lot of mistakes and there were a lot of things. People, the, the the what do they call it? Like the ATM machine and all that. Mm -hmm. People are getting. But you look back on it. Do you look back with fondness for the most part? Yeah, and I, I was I was very uh, rookieish going into that business, uh, you know, and, and I really never spoke for myself to get a certain position because that's not in Mexico. It was very different, you know. Uh, the psychology and and the politics are the same but different, you know. Uh, the status in 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 U.S., you know, people are fighting for their positions to to make sure they, they stay on the roster and they have the right storyline. Mexico, we don't, we don't go after big storylines like, like we do here. So uh, Conan would do all the talking, not just for me, but for all of us, yeah. like uh, the luchadores. So he would just try to be consistent with keeping us on TV week after week. Um, but if I, would've, if I would've smartened up and, and uh, you know, took in issues into my own hands, maybe my career would have been different, you know, but overall I think I've always been a, a composed person, uh, very respectful and, and uh, I want to say that I, I've never had any beef with anyone in the locker room. I always had a good connection with, with all my peers and that's kind of kept me at the level that I'm at. A uh, couple more things, and we'll let you go. And thank you so much. No, this no, has no. been a lot of uh, fun. By the way, I have a little present for you before we. Oh, leave. you do! Yes. Wow, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. No one's brought us a present yet. No, doing I'll all be these, the first so one. you are the first. Oh, yeah. That's and why I was we'll so make, excited. We'll make it a tradition. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Six one nine. Who came up with that? Was all all you? That was that was. Uh, so it was a, a combination of of two people, uh, one of Dominic's godfathers. Okay. And uh, Damien six six six, and uh, and myself, you know. Uh, Obviously, it's a move that uh, was created, and I want, I could be mistaken, but Tiger Mask, Saturo Sayama. He was the first one to do like the fake uh, mm -hmm. dive. Yeah. And then I would see um, Super Astro, a wrestler from Tijuana, who was one of my idols growing up. He's about 5'2, very stocky, and he would just do it so fast. And when I started doing it during my matches, right before I came into WWE, 
we were trying to figure out finishing moves and names behind the moves. At the time, 316 was very mm. popular. And uh, we came about with the area code for San Diego 619. I said, what better way to represent than this? So it stuck. If you could script your final match, what would be the scenario? Paint the picture for me. Where would mm. it be? Who would be the opponent? So if I could script it, I would probably, I definitely would love to, like we talked about earlier, leaving the mask behind, you know, and presenting it to my son. Obviously being on the same side, not against each other, because then I wouldn't give them <laughs> <laughs> um, Opponents, man, uh, it's very hard. I've had such an incredible career and have been so blessed uh, with all my opponents. I've had great chemistry with so many of them. Uh, the majority of them that, man, um, I think if, if I could pick somebody, uh, it would be impossible because he's no longer here, but I would have loved to have finished off with Eddie. You know, and even Eddie uh, having a match with my son, Dominic, which I know he's very proud of the success he's had. I bet. Yeah. Speaking of Dominic, I believe he's here, right? Yes, he is. Could we say yeah. hello to him? Yeah. He drove me by today. Oh, Come on, perfect. Dom. There he is. He's the big Uber. man is here. <laughs> hello, Dominic. So, so. Good to see you. Congrats on everything. Thank you. We've been talking about you this whole time. You're standing right over there. <laughs> a little weird. Do you... Do you uh, do you disagree with anything he has said about your, your uh, great young career? No, not at all. He's on point with everything, I think. <laughs> That's I've been a pressured dad, huh? Yeah, but in a good way. I, have, I always tell him I understand that he's one of the best, if not the best, to ever do it. So whatever he says, I take it as best as I can. Uh, has it ever been a lot where you're just like, Dad, come on, you need to give me a break? No. No. Come I'm, on. No, I, 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 like I said, I... He's, he's been on top for 20 years for a reason, so whatever he says, I, you know, I try to soak it all in. But I, I am a hard father. Like, I, I'm on him pretty much every night after Raw. You know, I tell him his flaws um, or what he does good, and, you know, I, I try to be up front with him. You know, don't sugarcoat anything. Is he, is he, is he super tough? Like, sometimes, yeah. like, brutally tough? Yeah, it's just, like, the nitpicky stuff, like, right. the little things that make what we do great. If that makes sense, yeah. It's just little nitpicky stuff. It's never uh, like big things like I messed up a move or it's mm -hmm. just little things that I can do to help uh, invest more with the crowd or just, I don't know, move faster. Mm -hmm. Just little things like that that he's, you know, perfect at. Because he is such a legend, because he has had such a great career, do you feel a lot of pressure to live up to what he has done and to maybe not, you know, exceed his career, but to just kind of, you know, the lineage, the name, do you, do you feel that pressure? Do you put that pressure on your shoulders? Yeah, most definitely. It's, uh, it's a big name to carry and it's uh, some big shoes to fill. And um, I'm just getting started, so we'll see. That's, that's what, as a father, I, I tend to forget. The fact that he hasn't been wrestling that long mm -hmm. and he hasn't been training that long either. You know, he went to three camps with Jay, uh, with Lance, and uh, in San Diego, level up, you know, so um, every time I, I'm on him about certain things, um, after I tell him what was wrong or what I saw that it needs to improve, I go back and tell myself, I gotta remember that he hasn't been doing this too long too. So uh, sometimes I gotta be easy, but then I see something wrong again and I'm, I'm on him again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe it's a good thing that I'm, that I'm constantly on him. But like Dom said, it's, it's little things that, that's gonna make his performance and his character just much better, you know? Are you happy with where you're at? right now, the progression, the evolution of your career? Um, I would say yes, just because everything happened so fast for me. Um, this August will be two years since I had my first match with Seth. And I think where, I've, where I am now, I would have never in a million years thought, you know, two years in I'd be former SmackDown Tag Team Champion with my dad and just, you know, everything that I've done, two Royal Rumbles, SummerSlam, it's just, it's been a blessing, and I've, I'm proud, but uh, I got I got long way to go. You're not gonna turn on him, are you? No, okay. no, never, I, I, I can't. <laughs> I'll be old, man. Do you wanna wear the mask? I, I always wanted to. I, I love the way the mask is, just the tradition behind it, and, uh, you know, especially in the Latin community and, and in Lucha Libre, but um, everything just happened so quickly for us, and, and I just showed up, without a mask, so everyone was like, oh, you know, he looks the same, so at this point it's uh Do you remember when, when uh, they broke the news to see if you were willing to wrestle, that they wanted to do you and Seth? Was it weeks 
week before SummerSlam? It was it was a uh, two months like a month and a half before, before. SummerSlam. Okay, so we had been doing we had been doing like the promos and yeah. the, and then that's when the kendo stick started with them okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And, then, and that night when we were talking about when the fans came back in Texas, how nervous were you? Um, I don't know if I get nervous. It's just more of like like uh, excitement. Like I'm ready to go. I get a little bit nervous, but I don't know. It's just something out there that just I just want to go. Impressive. So your nerves don't distract your performance? No, I, don't, I don't think so. I love it. Yeah. Do you remember, as we're talking about his 20th anniversary with the company, do you remember his debut on July 25th, yeah. 2000? How old were you in 2002? Uh, I was born in 97, so that I was five. Damn. Yeah. And you, you remember your dad yeah, debuting? What do you remember, if anything? We were, uh, we were sitting at home. The whole family was over at the house. Uh, we had a big party, and uh, we just remember... Uh, the we knew when he was gonna come out we heard the music and my mom just shh to everyone and <laughs> and he just came out man it was awesome just seeing him back out there again what a life right here you are now getting to like like you said uh no one gets to do this you've had such a great career and it's amazing considering early on people thought you were too small you wouldn't yeah. make it now you're one of the last men standing from that 90s run yeah champion with your son. It's really something special. As, as a father, like I'm envious of you getting to have these moments with your son, like getting to be in the same yeah. profession on a stage like this, accomplishing these things. It must feel like a dream. Oh man, 100%. You know, sometimes we, we just complain and moan about little things, man, but we don't see like how good we have it. And for me, like I could not ask for anything more. My life has been far more than perfect you know god has been really great not only with me with my son with with my wife you know because if if i can provide that means my close relatives parents brothers we're all good you know we're all set uh not to mention not only that but economically and and just the time the moments that we're living together it's just so special you know very very special like you said as a father you know you you never want your kids to grow up. When they grow up, they normally, they're gone. They start their own lives. It happens to be that my son is starting a life that is parallel to mine, which is freaking awesome. Incredible. Yeah. Well, congratulations on 20 years with Thank WWE. Congratulations you. on an incredible career, legendary. Thank There's you. only Thank one you. Rey Mysterio Jr. Thank and you very uh, much. Your, your legacy will live on forever, but it's very cool to see now your son try to take that uh, baton and create his own career and I can't wait for uh, you to wear the mask perhaps you know when it's uh, all said and done for the old man thank you so much guys I really appreciate thank it you. and Before congratulations go, yes uh, yes oh yeah so we have money in the bank oh you coming wow up, so, uh, uh, this is a little gift for me yes for you holy for you. smokes since it is money in the bank weekend you know uh, this is incredible that's yours that's yours you can I don't you know, know what they call me too. M not ease. Really? M not ease. Now you will say it should be la not ease. Right? No, L. No, you're right. Is it L? Okay, because the big nose. Yeah, that's that's what they call me. Because you're talking about him. That guy. I'm, L. The, I'm the man. El Nan. So El I have Nariz. a luchador, you know, alter ego. I don't uh, know if you know this. No, I didn't well, know. Well, this is going to be an. I only have one mask. My dog bit it. It's been hanging on by a thread. <laughs> this is the new mask of El not ease. That's, that's this is a big mask. freaking deal yeah, here. This yeah. is historic <laughs> stuff. Yeah, wow. Yeah. This yeah. means a lot. Thank Coming you, from you, thank you. thank you so much. I really appreciate thank you, it. Thank, thank you, my you. friends. Wow, amazing stuff. How about this? A freaking gift. Yeah. I told you I was excited. I didn't even know that they were <laughs> going to, I mean, the Rey Mysterio gave me. Incredible. Uh, an absolute legend. Congratulations thank on you. 20 years. Congrats on your career so far, and good luck to you. Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, 20 years in WWE, another edition of Ariel Hawani Meets, and dare I say, the best one yet. Hope you enjoyed it.